Hello, it is uh, Mike Putman uh, reporting live from ACR 2022 for a Room Now. And I'm excited today to talk to you about the Vasculitis Investigators Meeting, which is one of these small sub-meetings that happens around the annual meeting itself. And I was figured I'd like to bring some interesting uh, take-homes from what I learned there. Now, one of the things that was talked about and was actually just recently published were the new 2022 ACR ULAR classification criteria for giant cell arteritis. This is a particular passion of mine, and I think it's a very interesting project that's going to be affecting uh, all of our practices going forward. So this was a very large undertaking. It was based on the DC VAS cohort, which is a large international collaboration of vasculitis investigators. What they did is they said, what are the signs, symptoms, and findings that should help you diagnose, uh, classify giant cell arteritis? Uh, what they found was pretty much what you would expect. They chose age over 50 as one of the main criteria, and then the classic features that we're all used to seeing. Scalp tenderness, elevated inflammatory markers, uh, patients with jaw claudication, vision loss, PMR symptoms. So in general, I didn't feel like any of those were practice changing, but I thought it was affirming for how we see giant cell arteritis. Now, there are a couple take homes that I want uh, to focus on. The first is that they performed pretty well. The uh, diagnostic, um, uh, the sensitivity was 87% and the specificity was 95%, with the caveat being that that sensitivity is on the lower end, correct? Now, that is because these were classification criteria. This is my second caveat, which is that you should always keep in mind when you're reading of these, that these are not explicitly intended for diagnosis. They're meant to create a homogenous population for enrollment into clinical trials. So I think they're useful and helpful from a teaching perspective and certainly helpful in moving disease forward from a research perspective, but not necessarily meant for diagnosis. And then the last interesting point is that the highest uh, points that you got on the scale that they created was five points for a temporary biopsy or a halo sign on temporal artery ultrasound. Now, a lot of US centers are not doing temporal artery ultrasounds regularly. Um, it takes a lot of operator expertise, but I've introduced them in my practice and I find them very helpful. So my challenge to you is to try to find a way to introduce temporal artery ultrasound in your practice by attending some of the training sessions that are offered around the country and uh, at a very minimum opening perhaps just a fast track giant cell arteritis clinic, which I think a lot of us have found very helpful for helping reduce vision loss and some of the scarier complications of giant cell arteritis. So that's it for me from Room Now. Uh, thanks so much for listening. Be sure to follow along for more great content.